Hi, this is Jenny with Compass Travel. Thanks for joining us on our Travel Tuesday series. I have with me Linda Heckman from American Cruise Lines, who is going to talk about, oops, what's behind me? <laughs> this is the beautiful Queen of the Mississippi. So um, I've been hearing it a lot lately from my clients. Um, they're having a hard time getting passports or they're taking a long time to, to uh, get returned. So if you're just not feeling comfortable leaving the country, don't have a passport, what a perfect opportunity to experience these amazing ships. So I've asked Linda to join us, share her presentation, and she's gonna talk about what it's like to do some river cruising in the United States. So thanks for joining me, Linda. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I love Travel Tuesday. Yeah, this is so much fun. I And the best part is I get to meet so many different people and talk about so many exciting ways to travel and see the world. And often, at least, for me personally, I get so focused on getting out of the U.S. that I forget to appreciate how much great stuff there is to do here. And this is one of the things that I think we all need to experience. Right in your backyard. Exactly. Literally. I'm in Northern Illinois. We've got the Mississippi River is a two hour drive away from us. So um, it, it's really a shame I haven't been on it yet. So <laughs> well, I have a feeling there will be in your future, but for those that, that want something a little different, we have an awful lot to offer. Many, many, many different itineraries. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have Linda share her screen and start showing off some of these um, great slides she's got here. There we go. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. All right. So, well, thank you, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Uh, what you're looking at is the beautiful American song which is one of our newer ships. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about who American Cruise Lines is first because we're not necessarily a household name. So American Cruise Lines is a US registered cruise line. We are headquartered in Guilford, Connecticut. We are privately owned and held by a family in Guilford, Connecticut. I currently have a fleet of 13 ships, soon to be 14 next month. So being US registered means several things. Uh, number one, it means that we are required by law to have ships that are built in the U.S. In other words, an original U.S. hull of a ship must be used to be U.S. registered. Luckily for us, we own the shipyard where all of our ships are built. It's on the Chesapeake Bay in Salisbury, Maryland, and we do build all of our ships there. The other thing that's required by law is that we must have a minimum of 75% of our crew to be U.S. citizens. We choose to do 100%. So all of our deck and engine staff, all of our hotel staff on every ship and every sailing are US citizens. And the other thing that's required by law is that we are not allowed to call outside of the US, which means that we don't go to Canada. So when uh, Canada closed its borders to US and in Alaska in particular, and we do sail to Alaska, it did not affect us because we don't go to Vancouver anyway. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you some wonderful pictures of beautiful places that we travel. Get your map out and start making that bucket list because you're gonna find some things you're gonna to wanna to see. So here you go, over 35 itineraries in 31 states in the US. So everything from New England all the way down to the Great Rivers of Florida, if your bucket list includes that 3,000 mile journey on the intercoastal waterway from upstate New England all the way down to Florida, we can make that happen for you. Across the Ohio River and the Cumberland River, both portions of the upper and lower Mississippi, the entire length of that Mississippi River is 21 nights. The lower Mississippi is the most popular itinerary we have, and that is done either round trip from New Orleans or one way Memphis to New Orleans or the reverse. Out west, we're doing the beautiful Columbia and Snake River Valley that is from Portland to Spokane or vice versa. Beautiful San Juan Islands and Puget Sound we do from Seattle. That's an amazing itinerary. And Alaska, we're doing Southeast Alaska and we do it from Juneau. And these are some of the wonderful itineraries. The Maine coast and harbors are incredibly popular itinerary from Portland, Maine. And by the way, keep in mind that we're in these places when the weather is the best. So we're not in Portland in January. 
They're going to be in Portland now when it's lovely and you can have a clam bake on the beach. And there's your beautiful New England cruise. That one happens to be from Providence, Rhode Island. The Cape Codder is a new itinerary for us out of Boston. Also, again, amazingly popular. P-Town and Hyannisport, as well as Martha's Vineyard and Newport and uh, Rhode Island are all on that itinerary. Beautiful, quaint little villages in New England. The fall foliage cruises are done on the Hudson River. And as you can see, this is from New York City all the way up to Albany. We do visit West Point and we do visit Sleepy Hollow. The foliage is amazing. And these are amazingly popular itineraries any time of the year, but particularly now when people are trying to stay closer to home. This is our grand New England cruise from Boston. That's a 10 night sailing and goes all the way up into Bar Harbor, Maine, and then back down to Newport, Rhode Island. Again, lots of lobstering, lots of clam baking, wonderful itinerary. Ooh, there's those wonderful lobster I talked about. You know, I made lobster for dinner last night and they certainly didn't look like those, but you know, they were pretty good. But yes, we do lobster bakes on the beach on all these sailings. And now we're gonna go south. Our southeastern itineraries are again, some that are our most popular. We do sail from Charleston in uh, South Carolina down to Amelia Island or the reverse, either direction. Our Chesapeake Bay cruise operates from Baltimore. And it's again, something that's very different. Ooh, crabs from Maryland. Fabulous, those crabs are wonderful. A little messy to eat, but well worth the work. And this is a mid-Atlantic inland passage from Baltimore to Charleston. That's a great itinerary, totally different. And there's your Jacksonville, Charleston itinerary. This is Savannah that you're looking at, a picture of the squares in Savannah, which are just beautiful. It does call in St. Simon Island as well as Hilton Head as well. You wanna to go touch a manatee? The Great Rivers of Florida. And yes, you will get close enough that you can almost touch that manatee. American Revolutionary Cruise is one that is believe it or not, amazingly popular, which I think is wonderful. We do go to Mount Vernon as one of the shore excursions on this. And for the first time in 40 years, there will be a cruise ship docking in the nation's capital. When calls have been made prior, they've always gone to Northern Virginia, to Alexandria, Virginia, which I used to live in Alexandria. Uh, they are not going to call in Alexandria this time. We are actually going to dock in Washington, D.C., right next to Nationals Ballpark. And very excited about it. And like I said, it's the first time in 40 years that there's been a cruise ship. So this is a little trip down memory lane here for the American Revolution. There's your East Coast Inland Passage from uh, Baltimore all the way down to Jacksonville. That one's a little longer cruise, 10 night. The famous Mississippi River. Now what you're looking at here is Homer's House. And Homer's House is a plantation that is outside of New Orleans. It's a beautiful place to visit, uh, buy some wonderful honey, and they have a lovely gift shop with some books and things of that nature. At Christmas time, this place is decorated to the nines, and it is absolutely wonderful. There's the big easy, round trip New Orleans. So your New Orleans cruise begins with one night pre-hotel stay at the Intercontinental on Poydras Street, which is not far from the Superdome. And you spend one night there, and then we take you over to the ship the morning of the cruise, where you'll have lunch, and then we'll set sail. And this is a wonderful place to visit. You will learn lots and lots and lots about the Civil War and the battlefields. You will visit the battlefield at Vicksburg, and you will completely understand why the Anaconda Plan worked for the fall of Vicksburg. And by the way, Vicksburg was being fought at the same time as Gettysburg. This house that you're looking at is called Oak Alley, and you'll see those beautiful trees. Those are live oak that line the entryway up to this beautiful plantation, which was at one time so in disarray, literally the walls had been broken through and there were cows living in this house. It's been completely restored and it is magnificent. 
Now, this is one way itinerary, Memphis to New Orleans or the reverse. So you can do this itinerary either way. You don't miss anything. Just depends on if you want to stop and see the king in Memphis uh, before or after your cruise. It's entirely up to you. Or if you'd rather go round trip New Orleans and uh, eat some jambalaya on uh, Bourbon Street. This is the entire length of the Mississippi River from the Twin Cities down to New Orleans, again, or the reverse, you can do it either way, 21 nights. Now the river is dramatically different, by the way, from the top to the bottom. So when you've got all that wonderful uh, land at the top that's rich and uh, prairie-like, so to speak, and you come further south and you're gonna get into the wonderful part of the Mississippi River that everyone's so known for when you see all the barges bringing the grain and so on and so forth. This is uh, one of the um, shore excursions and it's in Iowa, the fort in Iowa, and that is included, by the way. Music City's cruise takes place between Memphis and Nashville. That is obviously Beale Street in Memphis, and it is a great itinerary. Uh, it is a wonderful place to visit, entirely, entirely different. Kentucky Lake is on there. I happen to live in Kentucky. It's a wonderful part of the country. Now, we are able to bring the ship all the way into Nashville. We do not have to stop in Clarksville. We can make it under the bridge, and we come all the way into Nashville, and we dock at the base of Lower Broadway, which is right where the um, hockey team plays. Right. Nissan Stadium, that's the name of the stadium there. So we dock right there, which means if you want to do some honky-tonking, and by the way, I understand they're going to open up those honky-tonks again in about a week or so. Uh, you can just walk right up the street to the Country Music Hall of Fame and visit old Toby Keith and some of those wonderful honky-tonks that are up and down Lower Broad. This is a really fun itinerary. St. Louis down to New Orleans. This is the middle section of the river, shall we say with the uh, trip to the arch, if you wanna go up in the, the uh, St. Louis arch. It's an interesting trip if you've not ever done it. I've been up in the top of the arch and it's a kind of a trip getting up there, <laughs> but it's fun and you can get a wonderful view from the top of that arch. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's telling me my battery's low when I'm plugged in, so who knows? <laughs> anyway, um, the upper Mississippi River again from the Twin Cities down to St. Louis, is the first seven night section if you're gonna do the entire length, the first portion from the Twin Cities down to St. Louis. The Cumberland River, here we go again, St. Louis to Nashville. See what I mean? We're not just Mississippi River. Just pick your itinerary, pick where you wanna go. That's one of the comments we have is that there's just so many to choose from. So how do we choose? <laughs> I know. The Ohio River takes you from St. Louis to Pittsburgh. So if you want to stop in Churchill Downs and go to the museum at Churchill Downs in Louisville, you can certainly do so. We also call in Cincinnati so you can get some of that good chili at Skyline if you're interested in doing that. Now we're going out west. That is Mount St. Helens with their top blown off. And that is one of the included shore excursions is the visit to Mount St. Helens. This is the Columbian Snake River. There you go. Portland to Clarkston, Washington uh, is where the ship actually stops. Spokane is the closest big air service on that end of the cruise. And you can go either direction, Portland to Spokane or vice versa, whichever works for you. It is the beautiful wine region of Oregon and Washington. It is absolutely gorgeous out there. Um, I picked out real estate both times that I've been on the ship out there. It's just a lovely place to visit. Just beautiful. Astoria is on there, which is named after John Jacob Astor. He owned a fur company out there. So Astoria, Oregon is named after him. This is the last leg, by the way, of the Lewis and Clark journey. So you will learn lots and lots and lots and lots about Lewis and Clark. And from Seattle, I mentioned this before, this is the beautiful Puget Sound and the San Juan Islands. It is absolutely glorious, just beautiful. In the springtime, uh, early May or early to mid-May, when this itinerary is being done, the tulip fields are blooming and they will take your breath away. They are just gorgeous. And now Alaska. So we are one of very few companies that were able to start our Alaska season. We did start it in uh, June, end of June. We will end at the end of August. We do sail round trip from Juneau in southeastern Alaska. It is a, an amazing itinerary with wonderful shore excursions. 
and there's the itinerary. So you're gonna board in Juneau. There's one night pre-cruise, by the way, in a hotel in Juneau that's included. Glacier Bay for a couple of days. It's quite lovely. It's a 175 passenger ship. So imagine the beauty of being on this small ship when you can get into some of these small places that others can't. And this one's a little longer. That was a Seattle to Juneau. It's a 10 night sailing. Now, we're talking about the fleet. So you have some idea of what our ships look like, okay? Again, this is the American song. There are going to be four starting next month in our ship of new modern river ships. They are no larger than 190 passengers when they are full. All of the cabins are outside. All of the cabins have a private balcony with an unobstructed view. They are just gorgeous. And, oh. Sorry about that. It looks like Linda's battery did uh, end up dying. So um, I'm not sure if she's gonna be able to join me um, back in on the presentation. Um, but what I will say is, uh, like she was mentioning that um, they are sailing, they're sailing now. So if you've got, um, if you've been thinking about doing river cruising, not sure about uh, doing European river cruising, well, let's stick in the US and, and look at one of these amazing itineraries. Um, you can give me a call um, at the office, if that would be 815-756-1547 to Compass Travel or send us an email at info at travelwithcompass.com. And I would be happy to um, talk to you about any of these itineraries uh, and give you a lot of details on these ships. So I think where she was going on this, uh, I'll be winging it a little because I don't have um, her presentation in front of me, but um, you know, you've got the standard um, Queen of the Mississippi behind me here. Uh, well, nope, that one says the America on it. Sorry about that, but there's similar ships. Um, the Queen of the Mississippi uh, is having its 10th year anniversary this year, um, but they're small size, so you're not going to be on a big cruise ship with a thousand people or, you know, thousands of people. Um, these are really nice size ships. Every cabin is going to have um, uh, an outside uh, view, so no inside cabins on these. So you want more details? Give me a call or send us an email. You can uh, leave a comment if you're watching this um, and I will follow up on it later. So thanks so much for joining us and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.